Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thanks for tuning it in to Oxygen Not Included. So last episode, I made improvements to the observatory, and I would like to reap the benefits. Now there's some things that I need to do in order to improve this observatory, and I'm going to make those changes soon. Uh, but the first things first, I need to work out a glass forge. Uh, so the issue with the glass forge is that it takes sand, you input sand, let me unpause it, you input sand, and then it turns it into molten glass that you need to put somewhere. You need to dump somewhere. Hello? There it is. Which means I'm going to need a pool of water, um, ideally a voluminous pool of water, and that pool of water will allow the sand, the, the glass to cool down into a solid. Uh, now, I am right next to a cold biome, and I do also have a pool of water here. So I'm going to set up my glass forge to use this water, and I'm going to do it in a way that I actually might be able to, uh, uh, to make this water even colder. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of work and effort, but all right. I'm going to put a sandstone ladder actually here. And this is going to be my construction priority. I'd very much like a glass forge. So one of the advantages of the glass forge is I'll be able to start using uh, solar power. Now one of the issues I had with these uh, bunker doors is it uses too much power when uh, strikes are being detected, which means I'm going to need to double up my uh, conductive wire lines. Essentially, I need to split my observatory in half and have one power grid for the left and one power grid for the right. So I'm gonna work on that split now. And this here will be a construction of six. And we'll get that underway. So it eventually did close, as you can see. Uh, but there was, these power transformers can only supply uh, 200 or 2,000 watts. And all of the devices up here really draw more than that, as you can see. There's a potential load of 5K. Uh, but even if, eh, that that's a potential load only if all the robo miners are like mining all at the same time. So that's not like, uh, that's, that's not likely to happen. Uh, but here's what I'm going to do. I am going to add in two more power transformers. Um, and I'm going to, basically, I'm not going to care about, um, about this cold biome down here. I'm just going to add the power transformers down here, uh, because I don't care about cold biomes. I know. Evil, right? Uh, maybe... The closer I could get to over here, the better. Actually, yeah, let's do it better. Um, power transformers, like this and this should do. Where we'll carry the heavy watt wire out. Put a platform underneath. And then conductive wire. Uh with a conductive wire bridge. And we'll have the ability to carry 4K power up there. And then what I think I'm likely to do is to run my power like this. I won't plug it in yet because I do need to cut uh, some of the, you know, some of the network, but all right, that's sort of the idea there. All right, back to the glass forge. Uh, another thing that I would want to do is to add some additional batteries so that I have more power stored for when I have dramatic peaks. I don't want any of this. When I have dramatic peaks, like trying to close my doors, all my doors. Um, so yeah, that that's going to be important as well. I'm going to dig the ladder down here and then sweep all this up before I do anything else. Alright, telescope is idle. 
We'll just keep scanning. There's really no reason not to. Scanning out and out and out. My hydrogen and natural gas seems fine. Doing a pretty good job here. Uh, some of my Weezworts uh, need fertilization. Well, that's fine. The temperature in there hasn't really risen uh, dangerously or anything like that. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, when I... Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to dig this so it doesn't share a wall. I'm sure it will come back. Well, no, I don't really care. Um, so, when I mentioned about the metals that are up here, it wasn't so much that the metals are hot. It's that when you are in space, I don't want my duplicates um, flying around space to collect these kind of metals here. And I might even, if I see them do it too often, I might have dedicated... Uh, I might have dedicated storage for those types of metals and then remove uh, so that they're sweep only. Uh, one of the issues that you're going to see when dealing with space is your duplicates will fly around space often to collect the iron, the gold, the copper, and also to collect barbecue because there are shovel voles that end up uh, like these guys, or shove voles, um, that end up, uh, they end up getting hit by meteorite strikes and the like, and getting killed. Um, so there's definitely a case to be made to say that you want to limit, you know, how often your, uh, your, the, you know, your dupes go out there and get themselves injured or whatever. Okay, so once we have these cables set up, I'll snip it in the, in the center, and then we'll have effectively two grids left and right powered by their own transformers so that I don't have um, uh, power issues. And I, again, I'm going to set all this to six. Conveyor loader is overheating. Yep. That'll, that'll happen. This conveyor loader, despite being steel, is overloading. Uh, it was overheated because, as you can see, uh, part of it is this regolith is really, really hot. And it's touching the bunker wall doors. Uh, if I wanted to prevent that, I would have put insulated tile here instead. It's actually not too late to do that. Um, instead of bunker. Um, because insulated tile will keep that heat out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that on the other side as well. I'm going to leave the bunker tile at the top. And then what I could do is I could bunker tile here. It actually really doesn't even... Well, yeah, I'll, for safety I'll go down that far. Because bunker tile cannot be um, uh, cannot be destroyed by strikes, but everything else can. All right, so I'll just make that a high, high, high priority. Okay, and we'll get that underway. I'm also going to deconstruct this conveyor loader and just replace it. Rather than to run a cooling line because that's going to be a real, a real pain. Alright. We'll leave them to that. Uh, let's get back down to the glass forge. Nothing has happened. But hey, we are... Um, We dug. So that's that's something. Now the reason I'm putting it here, this is right next to an anti-entropy thermo nullifier, which would be a way to cool down this liquid if it ever got too hot. But given the likely small batch of glass I'm making, uh, honestly I could probably just use this polluted water. Uh, but here's how it's going to work. We're going to have insulated uh, piping. To bring, hmm, I might just go through the abyssalite, because I don't want it to run too far.
This is kind of a long run because it, I well we'll see. I I might have to do some um, plumbing to bring water closer to it. I'm just not sure about this. So liquid vent. I'm gonna say this liquid vent will be uh, steel just in case of melting, and then we just dump it into the polluted water. That's basically how this works. All right. So an auto sweeper broke. No surprise at all. Uh, I do sort of suspect I'm going to need to run a cooling line sooner rather than later. Um, it seems like uh, temperature problems are becoming a thing and quickly. And I'd rather not have my, uh, my buildings constantly break. So, conveyor loader. Put that back in, and we'll uh, we'll just deconstruct the auto sweeper. Okay. So the conveyor loader and auto sweepers are regularly overheating. So what that means is I'm going to need to hook up a th a nullifier. Uh, so that we nullify the hot temperatures there, which is fine. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to remember where my closest one was. Uh, there was not one here. So there was one here. Uh, alright, well. I guess I'll start digging this one out. Because, yeah, a lot of stuff is constantly overheating and breaking, and without a source of cooling, uh, that is just going to be a common pain point that I very, very, very much want to solve. All right. Well, we have a lot of work to do, and this gives me focus for the projects. All right, so we do have a full ladder now. Uh, I think what I'll do, just because of the constant annoyance of breaking, uh, I am going to first focus on space. I'm going to focus up here. So that I, I'm not constantly uh, uh, annoyed by breaking stuff. So, let's get the auto sweeper in. Did I have it face... Uh, yeah, I had it face inwards. Uh, so, auto sweeper, and then another thing I'm pr probably going to want is, alright, stop making gold and start making steel. How much gold did I end up getting? Because that's been on for a bit. Uh, enough for two more statues and change. Okay, that's fine. What stress do we have? Bry's popped eardrums from an overpressurized area. I wish I knew what area that was. I don't. But that's... Oh. Why is it so overpressurized in this checkpoint? I'm not sure why. At all. Because this vent is supposed to max out at 2k? Right? It overpressurizes the 2k, but somehow it got up to 5.7k. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> that is not good. Uh, I could, I could fix this with a little bit of a gas pump. And, um... And... 
Let's see. Uh, gonna have to think about this for a minute. This is not entirely oxygen, so I can't assume it's necessarily oxygen. But uh, the gas, the gas vent is pretty straightforward. Just vent out the extra stuff. I don't. Uh, a little bit of oxygen is not that much of a problem. And then we'll have a pump here, and then. Um, Then what it could do is automation with a pressure sensor or Atmos sensor. Uh, these this should be made out of um, uh, not steel. It doesn't need to be steel. Gold amalgam's fine. And then I'm going to need some ladders. I'm going to have this be the highest priority because it's causing stress. All right, some lead. So now, uh, what we'll just do is we'll have this gas pump turn on when pressure's above, I don't know, let's say 3K or something like that. And, uh, and vent out the rest. So popped eardrums, I have to look this up. It's when you have greater than, what, 4K? Yes. So 3K should be fine. Gold Amalgam. Cool. Uh, 3K should be fine because it is above the vent's natural overpressure amount, but below um, the popped air drum amount. And then the conductive wires. Uh, all of the wires in here is, they're all made out of lead. I'll drop a wire from the ceiling. Okay, well that should work. as long as this Atmos sensor is set up correctly. So if above uh, 3,000, turn the gas pump on. Because yeah, now Dennis Keith has some stress build up, uh, likely from the same thing, from uh, pop deer drums. Alright, I'm going to focus on the upgrades to this, uh, to this observatory for now. Uh, trying to make it so that it's on two separate power grids. And then to run the nullifier. Now, about the nullifier, I have to sort of decide what my coolant will be. I don't have a lot of good options, to be honest. I have petroleum, I guess, which could be my coolant line. Um, yeah, my, that might be the best choice. And the other conveyor... Oh, because it got buried. Yeah, that's going to happen a lot. It's going to get entombed and get overheated. All right, so here we go. Now we're pulling uh, pressurized oxygen out of here. Hey, what are you doing in here? That's what I thought. Get on out. <laughs> I might need. Uh, I might need up here a uh, a carbon skimmer, just given the amount of carbon that I seem to be building up. Uh, a skimmer might be good. Just a, just a thought. Well, we're definitely working on trying to get uh, pop deer drums as a, as a non-issue. Um, that shove vole is going to constantly uh, reburrow and just be very difficult to kill. 
As you can see, these uh, duplicants are trying to chase it, and they're just not able to catch it. <laughs> it's kind of funny, if you ask me. Alright, so the insulated tile will protect uh, my operation from a little bit of extra heat, but uh, it will still get constantly broken and damaged, as you can see, proof of, proof of that over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and focus on running a coolant line. So, what that means is... Then, prioritizing this area. So, the way the nullifier works, a self-sustaining machine powered by what appears to be neutronium, it absorbs and neutralizes heat when provided with piped uh, hydrogen. Um, so, it's a way for you to make cold out of hydrogen and power. I think is the, the easiest way to explain it, or the layman's term way to explain it. And then you can harness that cold for whatever you want. You know, you name it, you could utilize it and harness it so that you control, you know, you, you generate cold uh, for the benefit of whatever project you're working on. Yeah, and this conveyor load over here is now overheating as well. Yeah, it's it's that that's that's going to keep happening until I run a cooling line. So that's why I'm focusing on this cooling line. Now the other issue I would say is that uh, I have a lot of plumbing that runs up to space, so I'm going to need to make space for such a line. Um, so if you take a look at this nullifier. It has intake for hydrogen, which is very, very easy for me to supply, mind you. Very easy for me to supply because I am already have a pipe full of hydrogen basically running right next to it. Now, another thing I'm going to need to do is to um, is to remove uh, all the debris around it, all this stuff. That will come in due time. I may just disable the sweeping for now. Just because I know it's going to constantly become overheated and self-destruct. And in order to limit the amount of self-destruction, I could just f fix it. Okay, we're almost out of popped eardrum territory here. We're very close with how much uh, we've pumped out. And what's funny is you can see, uh, you know, it's immediate deletion because of vacuum. You know what, I'm just going to destroy it. I'll put it in later. I can't be constantly annoyed by, by this and sidetracked. It's not worth it. Alright, so the nullifier here is flooded. And as you can see, I'm definitely going to need to unflood it before uh, I am able to use it. I don't really need a ladder there if uh, I got this one here. Uh, this ladder I will... Hard plastic... This ladder, I guess, is not, um, I can't destroy it, so I'm going to have to work around it, which is kind of annoying. You know, I'd need to cheat in the dev menu to get rid of this ladder, but that, that's fine. I can work around it. And why is this gas shut off? Oh, wow, it's really that hot here? Ah, so it is. I don't need any of this built anymore, so I'm going to uh, purposely deconstruct it. Uh, because we don't really have need for oxygen. Not supplemental oxygen. Uh, to the docks. So, I can break it down, and, uh, it doesn't really matter.
Alright, I think 3,500 is probably good enough. Uh, no, I'll do it a clean 3,000. Because, of course, the ammo here is less dense than the ammo in the corners. Muhammad, you are idle. Oh, you are stuck. So here's an issue where um, I actually could fix it really, really easily. So he is stuck out here because I haven't given him a valid path home. I'm going to tell him to move here. If he can. He's unrested and uh, sunburned and hungry. So this is an instance where he got... He was probably trying to get meat this uh, this uh, barbecue and um, got himself stuck. And he's about to run out of uh, jetpack juice. I think he's out. Yes, he is out. So this is exactly what I was referring to before. Um, where... It can be... No, dude, you're supposed to dig yourself down. Oh, you... You're you a little dumb. Uh, this is exactly what I was referring to before, where you, you can have a scenario where they um, do self-harm by trying to collect things where they shouldn't be going. And this is exactly what I'm referencing. Uh, he quite obviously... Um, Quite obviously went and tried to get uh, barbecue material. So I'm going to no longer uh, make barbecue for now. So what I could do is have the uh, barbecue here be sweep only. Or something like that. I haven't really decided exactly what I want. But basically the issue was he was going for this meat uh, to help make barbecue and he got himself in a situation where he was stranded um the steel doors because of impacts were uh, closed and he was stuck and uh and, and got himself in a situation where he couldn't get out of uh which is which is not good <laughs> it was really not good i i only barely rescued him so he's sunburned right now and he's gonna be a little stressed uh, but, uh, given some R&R, &R, he'll be fine. Okay, nullifier, nullifier, nullifier. So here's my nullifier. Let's go ahead and sweep this up. And mop this up. New printables, uh, sure, give me some more eggs. So we're going to prep this nullifier's area. So here's what I want to do. The, the anti-entropy thermal nullifier um, works best when it's also filled with hydrogen gas. That is uh, kind of an, a well-known fact. Um, so what I'm going to do is build a liquid lock, um, vent out everything that's in here, and replace it. Uh, now the awkward thing is the really stupid ladder that was built in here is going to make um, using this area a little weird and difficult. Which is fine. I'll, I'll cope. Uh, Alright, so let's prioritize all of this to 8. And cue something up for the telescope. As you can see, we're getting pretty close to... Ooh, a volcanic planet. We're getting pretty close to the edge of space in terms of observation. Uh, launching rockets is another matter. I have a huge technological gap between what I can observe and where I can go. And let's not forget about the Glass Forge, which we have made um, no progress.
What is that noise? Oh, it's uh, ice freezing and thawing over and over and over. Looks like a little uh, jumping bean. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right, so we've got the nullifier project here. And I want to insulate it like this. And then mop it up, sweep it out, uh, vent out all the polluted oxygen or whatever it is, and then we'll be using it. What else do we need to do? All right, so now there is no spot of this uh, checkpoint, which is too pressurized, which is good. My cable still has yet to be built. Yeah, I, I definitely have a lot going on right now, project-wise. But that's okay. All right, let's do a big sweep. And then a big mop. And we'll get this area ready for our dupes. So the way I see the nullifier working is that... Man, we are really not pulling this hydrogen away. Why not? Oh, uh, disabled by automation grid. Likely because my hydrogen is full. Oh, no, it's not full. Uh... I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on here. So, this gas element sensor is the one triggering it. Oh, yeah, because, you know, it isn't really hydrogen. You're right. The, the sensors are not wrong. Alright, let's mop up this uh, polluted water. And then we'll have a nullifier more or less ready to go. We just need to sweep up and wall it up. I dug out a little over here so that this slime isn't constantly um, sliming my stuff. So this will be the, the lock here. The liquid lock. Uh, this is a really, 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 really bad, poorly designed liquid lock. All right, so I'll do the slow liquid lock like these because uh, I don't need a fast one. So something like like this. And I'm using all insulated tile so that we minimize our. Um, that needs to be higher. So we minimize our uh, our. I used up uh, heating and whatnot. We don't really need to go in here all that often, which is why a slow lock is fine. All right, so the sweeping here is nines, and then everything else will will get done once the sweeping is done. All this hydrogen that is pulling up here. So I think what's happening is the very barely dense carbon dioxide has displaced the oxygen and pressurized the oxygen as a result. I believe that's what was going on. 
if I was to uh, take an educated guess. Uh, my cake howls are ridiculous right now. We have a lot of fried mushrooms, so I am going to... Set the priority of this farm to fours. So we just spend less time in it. Because it doesn't seem like I need the, the, the food right now. Alright, so it does say that there's some liquefiables. That I, I can store liquefiables. But um, they don't seem to be moving it. So I don't know where the liquefiables... Because this bin is full. Where is this liquid? Co oh, from my uh, natural gas, Jenny. Yep, that makes sense. My splitting of the power grid for the observatory is, is getting close to being ready. Uh, Alright, so all this ice here... I'll just put... I had a bin up here. Yeah, I'll just put it here. I'm keeping the ice in the cold biome so it doesn't melt. I kind of just don't. I don't need to be pulling in ice into my water supply right now. Because I have a healthy amount of water. So I'd, I'd rather just store it somewhere. And uh, sticking it in a bin out here in the middle of, no, in, in the, middle of the cold biome is fine. I, it said that, that this ice was sweepable. Uh, which usually indicates that there is a container that can contain it. But the fact that it hasn't been swept yet, to me, says that it's not sweepable. It's, uh, you know, that they've, they're kind of lying to me. <laughs> kind of lying to me. All right. And then the rest of this will be the water lock, uh, meaning that we're going to need plumbing here. Uh, if this is a thermal nullified water lock, uh, it, the water lock's going to need to be petroleum likely or something that can handle deep freeze temperatures uh water of course would freeze and turn to ice and become a problem so we'll go with the lower temperature uh so my hatches i'm gonna remove this we have recouped our population through incubation and checking on the other ranches they're fine And we're delivering that ice, and soon this area will be debris-free and ready to be used. Well, that's good. Okay, this body temperature climbed, what is it, above 104? It is, it is. So this is a separate issue of basically heat leaking into my checkpoint, making it uncomfortably hot. I'm going to uh, deconstruct this uh, metal sculpture and put in another wheeze wart. Wheeze warts might not be enough, and if I'm already using a thermo en uh, anti-entropy nullifier, you know what? No, forget it. I'm already using a thermo anti-entropy nullifier to run a cooling line up to my observatory, so I might as well cool down the um, the checkpoint as well. Two birds, one stone. Ooh, two more pip eggs. I really don't need pips, but uh, that's cool. You know what I could do is I can have them just slowly hatch. Uh, where do I have critter? E where do I have? I allow critter eggs. What in here? So all I have to do is say no pips, and these will hatch on their own slowly and I can then move them um, I can move them into the pip the neglected pip ranch here especially if they're wild and they hatch on their own okay we're almost done with this setup Okay, let's just make sure to sweep it all up. And liquid. Enable auto bottle for petroleum. 
It also means that I might want to enable my oil refinery because our petroleum is... Our petroleum stockpiles have diminished quite a bit. So I'll get that done. God, look at all this lumber, too. Forest fire waiting to happen. And then, if that's the case, I am definitely going to want to vent out my unwanted uh, gas. I'll just high pressure vent so I know I can't over max. Uh, vent out my high, my unwanted gas, and if that's the case, I'll probably need to run a power transformer. And eventually I'm going to need to power it up for real. The thermal ent entropy nullifier and the pumps and the... You know, there, there, there will be a little bit of a setup to be had out there once it's all said and done. Another thing I haven't checked in on is the glass forge. Which we haven't touched at all. <laughs> uh, this is all, let's say construction 7. Kick it up a little bit. But yeah, I think my dupes just have too many projects, so they're, they're juggling. It's fine, as long as they're being productive. Now, I did get a comment mentioning, hey, why don't you add more dupes? And the problem with that is, uh, more dupes means I need a bigger suit dock, I need a bigger dining room, I need more food, I need a bigger farm, I need, you know. it. Adding a few extra populations sounds great. Don't get me wrong, I agree, it does sound awesome. Uh, but the ramifications of such is that I need to do a lot, 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 lot more work. Alright, so here's what I need to do. I need to connect this up here as a really high priority. And... The last project I work on, let's uh, double up the power grid up here. That will be the last big thing I do, I think. Thank you. Alright, now with that connect conductive wire connected, I can remove this wire as a 10. Or a nine, rather. And I'm going to remove this wire as well. And then this as an eight. Okay, now that we have it cut, I can actually have this as a nine. So this here is going to be the way that I have two different power grids. And delivered. So that we don't have some of the doors unable to close. Um during uh, strike emergencies. I don't think anyone can reach that, can they? We can leave it there, no one will know. <laughs> totally, totally hidden. Alright, so now that, um, if, if you take a look at the potential, the potential on the left is still greater than the right, and that's because of all these suit docks. So actually, um... I'm going to move some, it's not going to be symmetrical, but I'm going to move some of this over to the other side. So that uh, there is more weight put to the right. Because right now the right, the right only has a potential load if literally everything is working all at once of 1800, which is below its max. And left is almost twice over max. Because of all these suit docks and everything. And if I, if I really wanted to do it right, I'd have these suit docks on a separate separate network or whatever. But um, I think that's pretty unnecessary, given that it's not likely that everything needs to get powered on at the same time. But I can, uh, I can load balance a little bit better here. By, uh, by switching what power networks they're on. Just, just a little bit. Just a smidge.
Wish I had more uh, oxyferns. Alright, and as soon as they construct these lines, it will get plugged in. So now it's a potential load of 32 and uh, 22. So again, not perfectly balanced, but but close enough that we're probably not going to have a brand out situation. Unless my batteries all over the map drain, which could happen, but uh, I don't think it's all that likely. I have a little bit of time left, so with my little bit of time left, let's try to get the pump and the auto bottler, bottle emptier, fill this up with petroleum, and then plug this bad boy in. Alright, here we go. Delivering 200k G of petroleum. And this is because the petroleum has a freezing point of negative uh, 70 Fahrenheit or 57 Celsius. So it's uh, it's not likely going to freeze up as long as I don't overuse the nullifier and super, super chill the area. And then um, I'm just going to get a switch in here. So we're almost we almost have enough petroleum to uh, to form a seal. I'm not gonna have it plugged in until uh, we have a seal. There's no point. All this petroleum. Let's take a look. Yeah, we're emptying out a reservoir here, so it would be good if we got the oil refinery refining at some point. Telescope is idle. I just want to scan everything. Be very completionist. Hmm. <laughs> the jumping bean is still jumping. Uh, while I'm down it, well, no. Well, we'll just we'll just keep working on this. So we're almost done. I'll just go until the nullifier is ready. And it seems like we can turn off the petroleum. We have a we have a seal now. Which means as soon as uh, this has vents, we can turn it on. Now, without these sweepers and the conveyor loaders, we haven't really had a lot of power issues uh, up in space. They are the ones, because of their constant operation and the heat that they generate when they operate, they're the ones that suffer the most from heat. Uh, but as you can see, everything is pretty piping red hot up here, uh, which indicates that they could all benefit from some radiant cooling from a, you know, a cooling line or something like that. And that, that's what we're going to build next. That's why I have this nullifier uh, getting ready to be in operation. So, I will end it here. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope to be uh, incrementally more productive next episode so that we can get to a point where we have space and our observatory locked down and full of wonderful solar power. I'll catch you all next episode. Farewell.